just play that song, keep on scratching all night. Hey, DJ, just play that song, you have me itching. For the next 10 weeks, we will discuss a different element of hip-hop culture. Uh, those elements being the DJ, the MC, breaking, graffiti art, street knowledge, beatboxing, street fashion, street language, and street entrepreneurialism. For the first time, we will bring experts to discuss and define each element of hip-hop culture. Uh, we are dissecting the seventh element of hip-hop culture today, which is street fashion. And um, before we get into our first guest, I just want to kind of uh, talk a little bit about the seventh element of hip-hop culture, street fashion, and, and start just by giving you a small definition. Uh, street fashion is the study and application of urban trends and styles, commonly refers to clothing trends of inner city. However, street fashion deals with all trends and all styles of hip-hop culture, what's in and what's out, regardless of expression. Its practitioners are known as hip-hoppers. Self-expression through street fashion is an important way to present hip-hop's unique identity to the world. Street fashion represents the prominence of all hip-hop cultural codes, forms, and customs. Not only is fashion a very ancient form of communication, but our expressed consciousness was and still is also represented in a way in which we adorned, colored, and dressed ourselves. Hip-hop street fashion has transformed the whole fashion industry, generating billions in revenue and setting all the trends for the world's youth. When you look at it, no matter what other form of music has, has been in the past, we've had so many young artists with, uh, with, with street fashion distribution deals and owning their own fashion labels, and no other form of music has generated so many entrepreneurs in this level. Hip-hop artists have done a better job at transforming the fashion industry than any of their counterparts they have gradu uh, that have graduated with college degrees. Instead of celebrating this fact, society has missed the real positive impact of some of the most successful um, young people and have stigmatized uh, this industry um, and created an illusion that hip-hop as a whole is a negative influence. Street fashion is young, street fashion is urban, funky, and fresh. And right now, we're going to go on to our first uh, person on the line. And uh, I want to introduce this gentleman. He is the CEO and founder of FUBU, The Collection. He's the author of Display of Power, and he's a branding expert. And in addition uh, to all of these trend-setting brands, uh, he has Heatherette, uh, Kuji, and Drunken Monkey. And uh, welcome to the show, Mr. Damon John. How you doing? Hey, what's up, man? Thanks for having me. How you doing? Oh, real good, real good. So, as you know, today we are talking about uh, something you know very, very well about. Uh, that's street fashion. Right. Yeah. And uh, I wanted to kind of uh, uh, get to know you a little bit. How did you uh, get involved in uh, hip-hop culture and fashion? How, how, how did you get involved with that? Well, I mean, you know, I think hip-hop culture always, uh, fashion is a really big part of it. So, you know, I was always into hip-hop, and that, that simultaneously means I was always into fashion. But in regards to hip-hop, um, you know, I was fortunate enough to grow up in uh, Hollis, Queens, where, you know, they say something's in the water, you know? A lot of cats came from there. It was Russell, the, uh, Russell Simmons, Run DMC, Salt and Pepper, right. LL Cool J, Tribe Called Quest. I can go on forever. Right. And, you know, I grew up growing up around there, you know, we would always all pile in a car and go to one of the closest cities that any of the rap groups were touring because back then when I was 15, there was only Eric B. Rakim, Big Daddy Kane, Fat Boys, LL Cool J, and Run DMC, and, they, and Houdini, and they were all on one tour. Wow. Those were all the artists in the country who was getting radio play. And, you know what, we were lucky enough to go to all these shows from, uh, you know, New York all the way down the East and Seaboard. Right. So, you know, we had a different type of style or flavor from New York, whatever you want to call it. And, uh, you know, we would wear our clothes and we would go down on these tours and kids would buy these clothes off our backs. Mm. 
you know, and it was nothing that they couldn't necessarily buy in their area. It was just the way we flipped it or we, we put some stitching in it or whatever the case was, right? right? Right, So, you know, that was that was really my first taste of fashion along with hip-hop, mm. you know? Yeah, and so your entrepreneurial spirit must have came out of that. How did you know that this was something that you wanted to do? And then once you knew that this was something that you wanted to do, how did you set your plan into action? Well, how did I know something I wanted to do is because, you know, I can't play ball, I can't sing, and I can't rap. So I knew there was, <laughs> you know, yeah. there, there was very few options out there if I wanted to be in this industry at that time. Mm-hmm. Now, obviously, there's millions of options from being a photographer to a director to anything else. Right. But, um, you know, and I set my goal out of frustration, you know, in uh, 92, uh, Timbaland, the, the boot company, had an executive that made a very racist comment. It said something like, uh, you know, we don't sell our boots to drug dealers. Mm. And, um, you know, at that time, I heard all these rumors as well about Tommy Hilfiger didn't make it for black people, Calvin Klein, you know, and knowing it now, I know half of it was rumors, but half of it was true. Right. So, you know, I was frustrated. I was like, you know what? I'm an honest working cat. I'm buying three pair of Timberlands a month. And, you know, these cats are talking like this. about when is somebody going to create a brand that's going to be proud of who they sell to? Right. And, you know, besides us in regards to African-American models, I mean, it was only Ralph Lauren using Tyson Beck for the supermodel at that time, generally. Yeah, you know, Tyson's a good friend of mine, man. Yeah, Tyson, I mean, he's a, he's a groundbreaking dude, you know? Yeah. So, you know, we came out with this this uh, this line mm-hmm. called FUBU. Mm-hmm. Now, how did you come up with that name? Because I always loved that name, man, because of what it represented, man. Well, you know, in my book, I... I talk about some alternative names we had, but at the end of the day, um, you know, it was for us, by us. Now, the the confusing thing at the end of the day was, who is us? <laughs> right. You know, black people thought it was for black people. Hip-hop dudes thought it was a hip-hop dudes. Americans thought it was for Americans. Inner city cats thought it was for them. Like, you know, us was a culture as far as we were concerned. Right. You know, because, you know, there's a lot of whites and, you know, other cultures who understand us just as well because they're, they have some of the same problems we have. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we were just talking about the uh, the multicultural aspect of, uh, of street fashion and hip-hop, for that matter, and how it brings people together. So Now, if you think about it, when I first came out, the first markets that sold my product mm-hmm. was Japan and Seattle, Washington, the white skateboarders. Wow, I didn't know that. That was those were the first markets. So, um, what is, I'm curious, what is your definition of street fashion? You know, I never knew what street fashion was. <laughs> you know, and I never knew what urban fashion was. That's always been, you know, a quandary to me because if is urban fashion is urban fashion because blacks wear it or blacks make it? Right. Because if you're talking about urban fashion or street fashion, because blacks wear it that means the first brands we wore in the hip-hop culture were lecoq sportif adidas levi's right so carhartt so they're not called urban companies not at all or street fashion company if you're talking about because blacks make it we've been designing since the beginning of time Mm -hmm. for all the companies you know, from people owning black, yellow, yellow, white, and brown. You know, it doesn't matter. Right. So I think that this was some way for, um, you know, people have to call it something. Um, but, you know, you look in the street now, a dude will be rocking Louis Vuitton just as quick as he'll be rocking FUBU and Kooji. So uh, I was always trying to guess what that was. What What makes one designer better than another? Um, I don't think any designer is better than another. I think that the message they're getting across is it get across with purity. And it's a... And why are you designing it? And designing is one small aspect of everything else because it's all about what you're designing, mm-hmm. the fit, where are you selling it, the price points, the quality, the advertising. You know, all these things have to mesh to speak to your customer. Right. If any of those things are out of place, you just have a basically a, a line. You don't have a brand. This is Miles, and we're taking a break, and we'll be back with the Street Talk Show. This is dedicated to the lovers. To the lovers. In you, in you, in you. 